The VZ2008 by Century Arms International. I've been really wanting to get a hold of one of these rifles. I've been very fascinated uh, with its looks, but I always love Czech design firearms. I'm a big CZ fan. The Czechoslovakian heritage has always been in the firearm manufacturing. And even during the Warsaw Pact years, when the AK-47 was the main rifle. So this is not an AK-47. In fact, really, beside the fact that it has kind of a silhouette of an AK-47, it is a totally different rifle, especially on the internals. Other than the use of the 762 by 39 cartridge. Otherwise, the VZ-58 has no other similarities, including the magazine. But what makes the VZ-2008 completely different than the VZ-58 is that it has a U.S.-made milled receiver and it has a U.S.-made barrel. Otherwise, all the parts and accessories that go to this rifle are surplus check parts. Of course, the first thing we're going to do is make sure the gun isn't loaded. And it is. Uh, one of the things I want to show right here is, which I love about this rifle over the standard AK-47, is the last round bolt hold open. That's one of the things about the AK that I really have never liked is that it doesn't hold that last round open. And what that does is it lets you know, for one thing, it also lets you work on your, your gun a little bit easier. But one of the big things is, is when your gun's empty, you can take your magazine out, insert a fresh one, and then rack the slide. So that's one of the things about the VZ-58 design that was really superior to the AK-47. This ridge right here actually activates the bolt hold open on the rifle. You can see how when the follower is depressed, it brings this part up that activates the bolt hold open. And then right here you have your manual bolt hold open that you can pull your bolt back, push this button, and it holds it into place. Inserting a magazine, it's really simple, it's really intuitive. And then right here is your mag release. Depress, pull it right out. Another big difference with the magazine versus the AK-47 is they are aluminum alloy. So they're lightweight. They put a finish on here that is really nice and smooth. Uh, the, the magazines have a really good quality to them. Now one of the big things about the magazine is there's essentially very little movement or wobble. I know a lot of times with AKs that are coming into the country, sometimes the magazines can really wobble. And another really cool thing that Century does is they give you four additional magazines to go with your rifle. Uh, and these magazines are also available online for about $19, $20 a piece. It comes with a nice leather pouch, original Czech military, and uh, the magazines fit in. It's separated. Uh, I'll tell you, it really slides in well. I'm pleasantly surprised at how nice this pouch actually is. Folds down, flips over. And you can tell that all of this gear is unissued. It does come with a bayonet and the leather scabbard. The bayonet, at least this one, is unissued, really nice. The bayonet mount right on the front, you come in from behind, click it into place. To detach the bayonet, there's a button right here, pulls off, very easy. Comes with a soft leather and canvas sling that's surprisingly comfortable with mounting points here and a ring right at the front. And it comes with a small little accessory kit for cleaning and maintenance of your gun. Uh, it comes with cleaning rods, a small oil bottle that doubles as a handle for your rods, has a little a jag attachment, and a little area here to slip patches through. This also doubles as your front sight adjustment tool. You have a firing pin release tool that also is used uh, when using the rod system. Have a great bore brush has a muzzle protector when cleaning your rifle, and also has a blank firing adapter that fits on the end of your muzzle. And this is all wrapped in the wax paper that you typically see with Eastern Bloc countries. Uh, and this does kind of help protect your bag as well when using solvents and things like that. Slides right down into your bag. And of course this ties off at the end. Now the VZ-58 came in three different models. This is the VZ-58V, which stands for Airborne and it has a wire collapsible stock to keep it really uh, close. You can also get the standard VZ-58P, which is a fixed stock, uh, very similar, of course, to the wood here. And then you have the VZ-58PI, which has an infrared capability. Really, the big difference with it is that it has a, a, a side mount, scope mount, conical flash suppressor at the front. And it also has a folding bipod that goes with that model. 
Now these stocks are supposed to be very easy to interchange. And you can see right here there's a large screw. Uh, this just takes the uh, collapsible stock mounting and puts it into place. Uh, this can be unscrewed and you can put on a standard full stock or many accessories. Supposedly you can just unscrew this, pull it off, mount whatever other stock you want to put on here. There are also a lot of aftermarket handguard covers uh, with Picatinny rails and things where you can mount a red dot. I mean, you can see that the fit and the finish, I mean, except for the wood, and the wood's just old surplus wood, but it's a really well done uh, rifle. And I have to give kudos to Century Arms because they are really upping their design and what they're doing in house. But Century does offer both the folding stock model and the full wood stock. And when I say wood, this is actually wood chips in a hard plastic resin type material. It's kind of impregnated in it. Really though, it holds up really well. It's very smooth and it feels good. Uh, it just looks kind of like it should go with shack carpet. <laughs> but really, it's not a bad looking stock and uh, it fits the gun well. Here you can see the wood chips, the grains are all through it. Uh, the grip is small and uh, if you have large hands but the good thing about these rifles is they're making a lot of aftermarket parts because these are becoming very popular for me personally i'll probably leave it stock just because mainly of all the different accessories and the things you get with this rifle the receiver's milled and it's a really nice finish to it uh, there are no tooling marks it's just a well done piece I, I, to be honest with you i was very impressed with the work that's done here uh, this is, again, from Century Arms, and they're making these, and they're doing a really fine job. The trigger guard is stamped metal. Uh, right here, it bends back so you're able to get to your magazine release. Uh, again, the magazines fit really well in here, and then just to press forward, pull them out. Uh, makes it really nice. There are some extended mag releases. There are a lot of different accessories, aftermarket accessories, that are being made around these rifles. There were over 960,000 of these VZ-58s made and they served in a lot of countries, not only in the Czech and uh, Slovak countries, but also in African and Asian countries as well. Uh, even served in Vietnam. I love how this is really open and one of the reasons why they did that was to keep down any kind of stove pipes or any kind of issues with that. It'll, it'll really just set it free once you pull this out. Uh, once the bolt is held back open though, all you need to do is pull back on the bolt to release the bolt stop and that just rides forward. I think one of the things that really sets this apart is the stamping here on the dust cover. And this is to me very similar to most of your check kind of designs. It's kind of a raised up pattern. It gives it a really cool vintage look to it. Now one of the issues I've heard a few complaints about are the folding stocks getting stuck. They're not really sometimes functioning well, sometimes it's a pain. Uh, I had an issue when I first got this one. It would, uh, would stick and sometimes you'd really have to get it against a hard surface to push this up and then to release the stock. Um, I've been working on this one and I'm gonna do a video just showing you how to break this down. It's not really that complicated and so it's, you know, instead of, I heard one guy send it back to Century and blah, blah, blah. Well, I think, you know, it's something that you can fix yourself. It's just tight tolerances. And one of the things you don't wanna do though is to make it to where it's not tight enough and then you lose your stability here with your stock. It just has a standard metal piece here, and then of course, this bar uh, doesn't give you any kind of cheek weld, but to be honest with you, it wasn't that big of a deal to me to shoot. Uh, one of the things I am going to do is wrap paracord around this, just to give it more comfort. But really, overall, it's a light, handy rifle, and I like to keep it that way. Now, here we have fire, we have safe. Uh, one of the things about safe is when you grab your grip you're going to know that it's on safe if you're a right-handed shooter so popping that out of place back into fire position uh, one of the things i noticed is mine does slip all the way around but that doesn't really do anything as far as the function of the rifle has one of the tangent rear sights which goes from 100 to 800 meters of course that's marked but then you'll notice there's a little u here and that stands for universal and that you keep it down there just for universal snap shooting uh, or you know targets that are on the move and this just keeps it low and close of course this just moves depress push forward raises the sight up 
to get more uh, yardage. Here's the front sight, and of course it's attached to the barrel. It has the a bayonet mount underneath. It is hooded. You've got your adjustable post here. This screws up and down to get your elevation. And then to adjust windage, you drift this pin. Here we have the Kalashnikov uh, standard slant muzzle brake, and it's held in with this little detent. Depress it, and then you can just remove the muzzle device. Uh, and this allows you to add aftermarket muzzle devices in which there are many out there. As far as the trigger pull on the rifle, it's not too bad. Uh, it is a little bit long, which is not a big deal. It doesn't come out too far because the trigger stays pretty close to the back of the trigger guard. As far as reset goes, you're pretty much coming all the way out. <laughs> but again, the stroke is not that long. The weight on the rifle is six and three quarter pounds, fairly lightweight, uh, less weight than your standard AK-47, even with a milled receiver. And I think with the milled receiver, it's a very slick action. Uh, I really like uh, how smooth it is. It just seems to function really well. Right here in the bolt carrier, there is a channel for stripper clips, uh, this SKS stripper clip. Uh, I did notice there's a little bit of wobble here, but it does seem to function fine. Of course, I obviously would rather use 30 round magazines, but it does give you an option. The barrel is 16 and a quarter inches. Uh, it's one in 9.5 twist. It is not chrome lined. You'll really want to keep that clean. Uh, you're in shooting, of course, a lot of the military surplus Soviet block ammunition. Uh, there is some steel in those, and you know that can wear your barrel out if you're really uh, shooting a lot. So that is one thing just to consider. I know on some of the more expensive versions, they do have chrome lined barrels, uh, but these rifles run uh, $499 to $399. In fact, I've seen them at Palmetto State, and I think Centerfire Systems had them for $399. Uh, that's with all the accessories that I've shown, which is a fantastic deal. The initial accuracy test here, and this was at 100 yards, not the best, but it did hold up pretty well with iron sights. So I was pretty pleased. Of course, it was shooting a little bit to the left, but really not too big of a deal. These sights are really great. These are easy to see targets. Just a great little target system. You need to check them out. Guys, I think the VZ2008 is an excellent choice. I mean, the price is right. And I can promise you this. In the next couple of years, this rifle is going to increase greatly in value. Uh, with the way it's machined and made. It's just an excellent gun. Of course, the original Czech design, the VZ-58, is just a, a classic and a legend in itself. And picking up one of these for the $400 to $500 range, you really can't beat it. Now I'm going to upload a separate video on the disassembly of the rifle. It's pretty simple and straightforward, but it is different than your AK-47. And uh, we're going to be looking at some of the intricate parts on how to, to fit things back and just a couple of little tricks, but it's really straightforward and simple. Then I'll also be doing a video on the AK-47 versus the VZ-2008 or slash VZ-58. And that way you can get a good idea of the difference. One of the things about this rifle, first off, that's different is it is a striker-fired rifle. And go to Century Arms International. You can check out uh, centuryarms.com. Check out all the designs. They sell them. They're a distributor to a lot of different companies, including Centerfire Systems, Atlantic Firearms, Palmetto State Armory, and Centerfire Systems, which the last two... They were selling these rifles for $399. A great deal. Guys, they will go up coming up uh, once the supply dwindles. Just mark my words. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. the original check design the ZVZ and it also has a conical uh, flash suppressor at the, like this pouch not necessarily going to wear it to the mall but it's pretty cool this rifle will make you want to sing the Bohemian Rhapsody <laughs>